They have sworn their lives to me. It is no simple thing to ask. And we appreciate it, believe me. But what are the odds of taking out a ship like this with four gliders and maybe a shuttle? A Gold attack vessel is heavily armed, shielded and capable of launching a legion of gliders against us. I would say slim. OK, call me a pessimist, but I think it's time for a new plan. We offer to lay down our lives for your world, human. You cannot ask more. No. Brad and, uh, you know, Coop, Cooper and, uh, um, and all the people that um, sort of kept writing for me. And, and Chris, for that matter, because Chris wrote several episodes uh, to, to, um, to sort of uh, explore our storyline. And that was, uh, that was wonderful and beautiful Vancouver. <laughs> and uh, Tony, how did the opportunity come about for you to get cast as a master of Bray Attack in Stargate SG-1? Were you so sounded out for the role? Were you sort of approached or did you audition for it? Or was it by opportunity that it just came about at the right timing? You know, it came about at the right time. I had just finished The Mask of Zorro. I was back in town for mm, maybe about a week, two weeks, and it fell. I got the audition. I remember specifically, I got the audition just before 4th of July. So everything closes down in the States for a couple of days. And it gave me the time to work on it. And uh, I, I worked very hard on it, not only because it was a very fun, interesting role, but because it was being shot in, uh, in Vancouver, which is uh, one of my favorite cities. And uh, so initially it was, you know, the big thing was, hey, I got work. Hey, it's in Vancouver. Fantastic. And, and little did we know that that role, you know, sort of ex exploded into, uh, you know, as you say, 26 episodes and just, you know, great friendships and great, um, great uh, sort of uh, a conversation, an ongoing conversation with the fans and et cetera, and being part of that, uh, you know, wonderful franchise. So it, uh, it was a life changer in some ways. Yeah. And were you aware of the the sort of who, when you were approached, were you aware of the, the cast that was already on the show? Were you informed who you'd be appearing uh, beside? Uh, uh, yeah, I was. I, I, I knew it was Richard, Richard Dean Anderson, of course, and, uh, you know, and Chris Judge and uh, Michael Shanks and Amanda Tapping. So I knew, uh, you know, you sort of do your homework. And, uh, but because my attachment, <clears throat> was to Chris, you know, I actually sort of looked into Chris more than anyone else. Obviously I was very aware of Richard, but I looked into Chris to say, who is this guy that I have to care that, you know, it's sort of, you know, my whole heart is about this guy, who is he? And, uh, you know, when I first met Chris, uh, it was easy to care about him. So, and it was, um, you know, so it, it worked, it worked very, very well. And uh, we were tossed into the belly of the beast the first scene we shot <clears throat> was uh, Tilk's arrival back at his uh, ancestral home, which is burned. And I'm there, you know, guarding, because I know if, if he comes back, he's going to come here. And I'm here to warn him and protect him. And, um, and then I meet this strange SG-1 team, you know, who, you know, are fighting alongside of Tilk. And I, I'm puzzled. It's great. It's wonderful to be puzzled as an actor because it gives you somewhere to go to get clarity. And along that way, if you're lucky and the writing is good, can be humor, drama, tension, whatever you uh, whatever you want. And I suppose, uh, Tony, in terms of um, you've worked in an awful lot of uh, movies, you've worked in an awful lot of uh, TV series, yeah, even before your time in uh, Stargate SG-1. When you arrived on the set there on your sort of first day in terms of uh, shooting, were you sort of taken back by the sheer scale of the production, about the sheer, the, the sheer expense, the snowstone, or left unturned that they did in terms of the sets? the sheer scale of the sort of project and did you you've been around sort of good projects did you get a feeling from your first day that yeah this is a show that's going to run for a number of seasons well uh, yeah certainly certainly the, it was a show that they cared about and money they did have money and they had wonderful effects and um you know particularly as an actor when all of a sudden you get to wear the mnemonic head you know that sort of opens and you know the zat guns and uh, staff weapons uh, so, so I knew I was in good hands. Now, as far as you never know how long a show is going to run. 
And I remember specifically, it was maybe in the fourth year, fifth year, it was the episode where Tilk and I are, well, he's saving me by giving me his symbiote and we're, we're sort of on a beach amidst a, a, a massacre. And we shot that in the banks of the river out by the airport. And I remember overhearing a discussion between, uh, uh, you know, various people, are we coming back for another season, aren't we? And it, we were waiting for perfect light. That's, you know, that golden sun, sunset light. And, uh, and I'm looking and in the river, the Fraser River, the salmon are running and they're jumping out. You know, when they're, they're, yeah. they're running, so they're literally just jumping out of the water and the sunlight is catching them. And I remember leaning over and say to Chris, uh, don't worry guys, you, you're, you're coming back. He said, what, don't worry, trust me, you're coming back. What, finally he said, what do you know? What do you know? I says, well, look, even the salmon are jumping out of the river to get a look at Stargate. And that, <laughs> we all cracked up. And when you think about it now, we got five additional seasons. That was probably the fifth uh, season, four going on five or five going on six. And, we, and the fact that we did 10 was fantastic. And I suppose, uh, Tony, uh, you're a very sort of well-averse sort of an actor. Uh, you're a busy sort of schedule. How, was it easy sort of to make time each season to appear in, uh, Star, uh, in, in uh, Stargate? And were there certain times that you were wanted, that you were tied up in certain sort of projects or movies that you couldn't uh, commit to and that you had to come back yeah. at a later time? Well, that's always that's always a problem, you know, when, when you have an abundance of uh, riches and all of a sudden you're wanted as an actor in two places at the same time. Uh, it's a good problem to have, but it's a bit of a heartbreak sometimes because you can't um, do it. It always worked out with Stargate. I was in a, another series called Once Upon a Time, and I missed several episodes because I was doing other things. But Stargate, we had, uh, I'll never forget, we had, uh, I was doing Cyrano de Bergerac. I was doing a play. And uh, uh, I thought I was clear. I, I thought that they would not be using me for the two months I was doing the play. And sure enough, they, they needed me. And I remember I called uh, Brad and uh, spoke and, you know, there's anything possible, anything to do. And God bless him. They changed the schedule around. So they shot me on Mondays and Tuesdays during consecutive weeks because the play was Wednesday through Sunday. I, so I would fly up you know, very late at night on a Sunday to Seattle. There wasn't a plane to Canada. A driver would pick me up. I'd get to my hotel probably three in the morning. I'd get up at seven and do do that day. But it was so wonderful and so kind of them to, um, to rearrange that. So it has happened. And sometimes you just have to let it go. But uh, luckily with Stargate, I did not miss an episode where they wanted me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tony, in terms of uh, Stargate, I suppose it has a global fan base all over the world from Brazil to Argentina, South Africa, Germany, England, Ireland, um, so on, so on. And uh, when did you start to realise on set that, wow, this thing is truly global? Was it season three or season four that you got a sort of a sense of the, how far Stargate had spread across uh, the planet, as the saying goes? Well, I, you know, I remember specifically, I... Um... You know, I used to, I live in Los Angeles, but I used to fly back uh, east to visit my family with my wife on uh, Thanksgiving. In one of those cases, we rented a car and it was raining. We got in the car and we drove to our destination. When I got out, I saw there was a dent in the car, mm. in the door. It was quite a, and I'm thinking, okay, now I drove from the parking lot to my home. So I knew that it was nothing I had done. I hadn't parked. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, we'll deal with it. So I go back, return the car. And as I'm returning the car, I go to explain, I'm just about ready to explain about this uh, dent. And the guy says, wait a minute, you're the attendant, you're in Stargate, right? I said, yeah, 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 I am. He said, oh, oh, and he said, it's the only thing my father-in-law and I agree upon. It's the only thing, it's the only thing. And I, you know, is there, could you take a photo? I said, sure, I'll be happy to take a photo with you. And then I explained to him about this, dent that I said it wasn't me oh don't you worry about that he said don't worry about that and then I realized Stargate was <laughs> was a popular show uh yeah 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 well, you know what a gift because you're right it's all over um you know I've been lucky because I've uh, you know between Stargate uh, Once Upon a Time Dexter uh it's always interesting sometimes I can see a, a glimmer in people's eyes and uh, the game I play in my mind is 
what show are they a fan of? Are they a fan of Stargate? Are they a fan of Once Upon a Time? Or are they a fan of Dexter? They're very different people, you know? So it's, um, it's, it's fun and it's, uh, 